Hello everyone, this is Captain Kyle I'm at Walker Soccer North Jersey with Jay Bonensinga. He is an awesome author of a lot of the Walking Dead novels. That was well pronounced, by the way. You pronounced the name beautifully, like better than my uncle. And he has the same last name? He says Bonensinga, Singa, and my dad says Bonensinga. I don't, I don't really know what the proper pronunciation is. We'll just go with mine, how's that? <laughs> it's good. Because this is going to be official on, you know, video. Yes, actually now this is canon. Yeah. The, the pronunciation by you of my name. It's going down in the annals. <laughs> Very cool. I'm sorry. So, it's all great stuff. So, how are you enjoying the convention? Loving it, loving it, loving it. Um, great flow of people and, you know, we're, we're represented by Little Shop of Comics out of White Plains, New Jersey. Great store. Just really a wonderful time. I mean, people people are so um, effusive with their love of not only the books, but just the whole the way the books interact with the whole you know uh, franchise, the whole all the mediums that The Walking Dead explores. Everybody loves the way the books sort of interact with them. So I'm really proud of that. Very cool. Glad to hear it. So you look around. And you see some people, and they're not dressed like in normal street clothes. Some of them look like they're stepping right off the screen or actually right out of the pages right. of a Walking Dead you know, show or book. What do you think of these cosplayers? I love, love, love cosplay. I love, I love what it means to me as a creative person because they're taking... You folks are taking uh, an icon or an archetype that I have lived with for sometimes for years and I feel has jumped off the page and I feel like I could turn around any minute and there they would be. So when I come here, I do that. I literally turn around and there you are as my favorite uh, phase of David Morrissey's The Governor. And it's like a great feeling. It's a, it's like, it really is like a feeling of adrenaline, like I'm seeing a three-dimensional representation of what I have lived with in my imagination. And Ro I'm sure Robert Kirkman, you can multiply that by a million, you know? So uh, we, we, the writers and the ri people in the writers' rooms, love cosplay and love the, what it means to us, you know? Does that make sense? I, I don't know, it sounds kind of strange, but. It does make sense, and I imagine, you know, to see your creations come to life, you know, yeah. in people who are not even paid to do any of this stuff, exactly. they just do it out of love. It's right. a great feeling. It's, that's, that's well said. I should, I should sort of add that, that it's a sharing of these characters with love. Like, you can just feel it. You can feel that the, the cosplayers, lo you know, love these characters so much, they want to just embody them and represent, you know? And that's what I love about the, I think, the most, is they're just representing, you know? It's awesome. Well, yeah. Part of the cosplaying yeah. dead? Speaking of that, yeah, exactly. Would represent. Representing. <laughs> so. <Keep> representing. <laughs> So if you were to come to one of these conventions, not even necessarily Walking Dead, it could be a Comic-Con, could be a Sci-Fi Con, but not as a guest, but as an attendee, and you were right. going to dress in a costume, what would you dress as? I would, I would be a transvestite and dress as Michonne. Well, you could just I be Manchon. I dig her look, I think. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a close, it's ironic because, you know, Michonne and the governor are sort of, you know, um, opposite polarities. They're, they're like the immovable object and the irresistible, you know, force. Uh, but I love both their looks. Like, I love Michonne's sort of, you know, buckskin, badass babe with the dreads and the, you know, the katana, and it all works together, you know. And I will not be surprised if, we see, you know, Armani or something creating, <laughs> you know, like a, like a formal version of that, <laughs> you know, on the runway. But the same thing, the same goes for the governor. Like, like you know, when, when David's performance kept getting darker and darker, to me, he kept looking cooler and cooler and more stylish. <laughs> Well, David just looks stylish anyway, David, no matter... David can rock any outfit, <laughs> you know, but as, he, as the governor starts to, like, descend into his, you know, 
um, hell, his personal hell, and he, and he gets more and more evil. Uh, he, he, he looks um, uh, more and more um, stylish and cool to me. <laughs> and, and you notice his clothing gets darker in, with each thing. Right. He's, he, well, you know, and plus, I mean, not to go off on a tangent about how the governor uh, as a character has evolved from the comic book, but it's it, the governor has, just to put it succinctly, the governor has gotten richer and richer and more complex uh, with each iteration, you know, in my in my books, and then finally, David's work has made him real and three dimensional, you know. But with that, he he, he he's gotten less conservative in his dress. <laughs> well, we also have that uh, happens to all of us, at some point or another. Now that I think of it. So if we see you sporting a leather jacket and an eye patch, we know that you're yeah. trouble. I'm I'm thinking about doing that later tonight when I go out on the town in New York. Uh, I, I have some stuff I can lend you. All right, cool. Cool. It's a deal. And I think we have Yulin Womble to thank for doing an excellent job in outfitting the governor and making that tone. Thank so. you. Thank you. I started, you know, with he, he's more of a blue collar starting point in my in my books. And David sort of took him more into the white collar sort of, you know, uh, middle class suburbs of Atlanta, you know, and, and had him be sort of a family man, white collar, and then it all sort of went awry with the plague, with the outbreak, and so he had that a different starting point. But he ended up sort of in a similar place that that the the, the Philip Blake did. I don't know if you were aware of this, but he didn't have a last name in the comic. I, I don't know if you were aware of that. No, I was not. He, he did not possess a last name in the comic book. We had to come up with a last name for him in the books because books, you, you know, books require a little more of that in introspection, detail, yeah, yeah, verisimilitude, and um, and I wanted a name for him that sounded like the actual the name itself could cut you, <laughs> you know. So I thought Blake, Blake, made sense for both brothers. Also, there was maybe a nod to you know William Blake and and like transcendental visionary, crazy artist, poetry, visionary, you know, that kind of like sort of um, uh, symbolism and everything. So, so I think about names a lot. And I actually, when I, when I saw it, I was thinking maybe he's a descendant. They added the B at some point of Jackson Lake. I don't know if you're familiar with his character in Doctor Who, but in the 1850s. Oh, 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 oh yeah, I am familiar. I didn't even think of that, but I'm familiar with the character you're talking about. That's great. See, that's the beauty of it. Not to bring it back to cosplay, but you know, we're about we're a cosplay we're about show. Out of time, so I'll bring it back to cosplay. Um, the associations sometimes that cosplay cosplayers sometimes bring accessories and cool attitude and stuff that was never in the original archetype, the original character, and that's the beauty of cosplay. Cosplay has its own flourishes, and I, I will bet you. I'll say this uh, in closing. I'll bet you cosplay is so important to the Walking Dead creative teams that it goes back the other way and cosplay cosplayers, the best of them, might influence the future of the characters themselves. That sounds really cool. That That's like a, a positive feedback loop system. Exactly. So, exactly so I know we're just about out of time. What do you have new coming out? Just want to let you... Uh... Oh, thank you for asking. I'm starting my own little boutique publishing company called Magnetic Inc. With a K. Magnetic with a K. Inc. And on, at, at that website, magneticinc.com, you can download chapters from upcoming books. You can, you can actually win Walking Dead books, sign Walking Dead books, but also learn more about my original novels, which are all sort of in the horror psychological horror genre in, 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 as well, you know, so thank you for mentioning that. Not a problem. What, self what is storage, self storage comes out January of 2016. The darkest, most disturbing, twisted, trippy book I've ever written. Wow. And that's saying a lot, having read some thank of your you. work. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll stand by it. <laughs> and where can they find you on social media? Um, they can find me uh, on Twitter at, at Jay Boninsinga. They can find me uh, uh, on all over uh, Facebook. I've got several Facebook pages, one for Magnetic Inc. and one for myself, my own fan page, at Jay Boninsinga. All right, awesome. Yeah. 
Well, as you said, we're out of time, so that's all we have for now. But as always, have fun and cosplay on.